after the uh, Walk the Plank, uh, there's Trench Warfare, which was absolutely brutal. I don't know if uh, you, you got a chance to see uh, some of the pictures I posted on Facebook of my shins and these, but this thing is, um, y y there's all these trenches, and you just get in one, there's a bunch of holes, and you get in, and they're just big enough, just big enough that you can crawl, essentially, on your hands and your knees. And as you cut, get into the the the, uh, the trenches, um, you you know they they you know they've got right a bunch of right turns and they weave all through as you're going in and they are super slick and muddy but also gritty and stony and you gotta like slide through it. I'm telling you what, it just cut up my legs uh, something fierce. I, I um, oh I was just in excruciating pain going through there. I could feel my my shins and my knees. And you're already fatigued and you're tired, so it hurts that much more. Everybody was complaining in the holes. And it's funny, you go in the holes, there's a little bit of light coming in, and then in the middle part, it's all dark. You know, where the hell you're going, and then you come out, there's light. Um, but then you're pretty much near the end, uh, and I think that's where I uh, I started wondering. I was really starting to feel, I started wondering, you know, where exactly I was uh, in the course. I felt like we had to be getting close to the end. I didn't know how long I had been out, but I was definitely starting to feel it. Um, then there's a bit of a run uh, up to uh, some more Berlin Walls, the um, the Buddy Carry, uh, Mount Everest, and the um, uh, what do you call it? The um, electroshock therapy, the last the last obstacle. Um, and I, I think that you know uh, the uh, the one that the one that was interesting to me out of, of the last bunch was the Mount Everest. And uh, what was interesting about Mount Everest was uh, it was certainly it was a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. Uh, it was uh, higher. I don't again. I'm I'm terrible with height, so I don't know how high it was. Fifteen feet, maybe or something like that. But or maybe more, maybe I don't know. But it was a lot higher than I expected. Um, and you know, by the end of the day, it's really slicked up with mud. Um, you get a, a short run. If you look at the pictures of that were online, a lot of those pictures were done in the morning, and there's grass. By the time we got to it at you know whatever it was 4:35 o'clock at night, it was just mud. There was no grass to run across, and so um, but you get a bit of a run up, and then there's a little bit of a, a you know a, a curve, and then it's near vertical um, up to the ledge. And I watched people, because you have to stand a line for this as well, and there's quite a line, because people were failing at it uh, a lot, So, and people taking multiple turns, so there's a, lo a lot of backup. Um, it was interesting, though, I stood in line, and there was uh, a number of people ahead of me, and I watched them, and, and then I watched other people, and what I was f seeing was that um, the people that kept failing would run, and there's all these people hanging over trying to grab you and pull you up, right? And what I saw was that people would run to the base of it and then just jump and try to grab hands to be pulled up. And almost all those people failed. Or if you did get a hold of a hand, you struggled and struggled and struggled to slide and slip and slide and get pulled up. And half the time you would struggle a, a, a ton and then fall anyway. It's sort of like what I was saying earlier is if you don't need the hand, you're better off not taking it. You know, it's great that people are offering it. But I, what I saw was people that made it ran right to the top of this thing. Of course, you didn't know how slippery it was, but when it was my turn, I was just determined to uh, go for an open space, not where there was people hanging directly in front of me, and to run all the way to the top wood ledge where there's like a wood two by four, or two by two by six there to hang on to at the very top. And I basically just ran straight up to the wood and then grabbed the wood. And amaz I mean, interestingly, I guess, I, I didn't really slip at all. Went right to the top, grabbed the wood, and, and, and essentially swung myself over uh, and really didn't expend hardly any energy. I thought the Everest thing was going to be brutal. I didn't know if I was going to complete it because it was just looked so tough. But honestly, if you there's another one where if you skip trying to grab onto people and just run straight up to the top and do it yourself, you'll, you'll do it fine. Um, you just bolt like a mother, uh, everything you got, and but with your eyes on the top of the ledge, I'll literally feel like you want to run right up the top of it um, and not try to get literally to the base and then jump and reach up to somebody's hand. It just w was not going to work that way. Now, if you get to the top and you're grabbing a hold of that thing and someone can help you, that's that's fine. But 
well, most people were literally jumping for hands and it just it was it wasn't working out but then you know I finished that came down the other side of that and again I thought coming down was harder than than the Mount Everest itself because the slats it's pretty steep and the slats they put for you to step on which I'm sure earlier in the day were just easy come down real fast were now caked with mud to the point where there was nothing to put your foot on so uh, I took my time and dug my feet in and, and it took a little while to come down to be totally honest with you um, and then the last thing, electroshock, uh, after being shocked previously three times in a row on the eel thing, the climb, I was honestly, I was a little, uh, uh, I, 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 that was the one obstacle there wasn't a weight that I actually stopped to look um, and kind of, you know, think about it for a second because I'm telling you, man, I, I was not expecting the shocks to pack the wallop that they did. Um, so I, uh, I took a look, I watched a, a group go through me right before, I watched their line, it seemed to be pretty smooth, and I blew through there, uh, and if I got shocked, it was, may have been once, uh, but I don't even think I got shocked, to be totally honest with you, and I was quite frankly happy about that. Um, but, uh, and then you, you, know, you finish, you run up, you get your orange headband, and then uh, your t-shirt, your mylar blanket. I, I'll tell you what, it was amazing. I was so cold by the end of that thing. I was shivering. It was about 5 o'clock. The sun was going down. It was cold. I couldn't stop shivering. And I'll tell you, that little, I've never used one of those mylar things. You always see them at the marathons and everything. I wrapped this little thin, papery thin mylar thing around me and instantly warmed up. I'm not, not a ton, but I mean, I warmed up. And then I got my beer, and I, I tried my best to drink my beer, but I spilled half of it because I was shaking so bad. Stood by the heaters, warm up a little bit. Uh, but, um, you know, I was going to shower and get cleaned up, and I had all my stuff packed, and it was, I was so cold and tired. I pretty much, and muddy, I pretty much said, forget it, I'm going to, uh, and what I ended up doing was uh, basically just, I had a towel, a couple towels, but I had a towel, and I just basically took all my wet stuff off real quick, knocked as much of the gross mud off of me as I could, put my clothes right on top of my muddy body, and uh, uh, I warmed up instantly, put on a hat on my head, because as you can see, I have no hair, so I was just losing heat. Put a hat on my head, a, a nice warm hoodie, um, and uh, off we went, and I drove home three hours in just sticky, stucky mess. I mean, you couldn't move, I couldn't move, I was so stuck full of mud especially my legs, uh, clumped on my head everywhere. I was sunburned from the first part of it, scraped and bleeding on the top of my head and my shins, but I made it home in three hours and uh, got home, uh, talked to some family about the whole thing. Um, my daughter was already, uh, had gone ahead and was already sleeping and, and sleeping soundly in her bed, but I went in and kissed her goodnight and tucked her again again, even though she was sleeping. And uh, Got in a hot, hot shower and got as much of the mud off as I could because uh, it just kept coming off, seemed like, for days. Um, and uh, got a good night's sleep, then I had to get up early. It was a long weekend. I won't go into the whole thing. But uh, got up early the next morning. I would have liked to have slept in. Um, but uh, got going about it. Uh, and uh, I felt it. I mean, you know, it felt a lot to me like uh, football days, you know, after a, after a Saturday game, waking up Sunday morning and just feeling sore and beat up and like, wow, did I really, why, how did I get that? Or why is that sore, you know? And um, that's how I felt uh, Sunday morning. Um, but it felt really good uh, in a weird kind of way. I felt good to just be, feel fatigued like that and beat up like that and know that you accomplished something as cool as a Tough Mudder. I, I think that the Tough Mudder is a really, really cool event. Um, you know, I think you have to go into it uh, you have to prepare, um, you know, train to some degree whatever level you want to try, if you really want to push or what, but you have to train for it to have fun. I think if you don't train for it at all, even if you're just going to have fun, you won't have fun unless you're prepared physically, mentally, and, and physically, uh, or not physically, mentally, and, and um, you know, uh, just, you know, able to, to skills-wise, able to perform at some level. Otherwise, you'll just either get hurt or just not have any fun. But I would say that it is a great event. It's a ton of fun. Um, it was worth every, I mean, I enjoyed every brutal minute of it. Um, and I was just absolutely so glad I did it. Um, I was super, super, super happy uh, with the way I trained and with the way the training impacted my performance on the day. I, um, 
uh, really felt extremely good, especially on the obstacles. The running, I felt good in the first half. I, I knew I was going to fatigue out because I'm not a runner. The calf cramp didn't help. Um, but uh, on the obstacles, I just felt great. And it, it, I had a lot of fun on the obstacles um, because I was prepared for them. And I didn't do any obstacles. I didn't climb ropes. I didn't climb walls. I didn't do stuff to try to prepare skill. I used functional training in the gym to prepare biomechanical skill sets, not the skill itself. I think you could probably prepare for the skill, but you know they, th they change things up, they throw different things at you. Having the basic biomechanical skill, I think, is far superior um, because you're then able to do pretty much anything they throw at you. So over the next couple weeks, um, I'll take some time to explain what I mean by the basic biomechanical skill and also explain how you can tr train. You can go to the gym and train, um, do a lot of the same exercises that I did, and not get the same kind of biomechanical skill set out of it. If you're going into it with a specific knowledge base and a specific focus, you can get much more of the biomechanical uh, basic skill, fundamental skill base that's going to allow you to perform the obstacles in particular, um, no matter what they throw at you. Um, so I'll, I'll cover that in some video blogs as, as we go forward in the next couple of weeks, because I think that's really important. Um, and then certainly contact me. Um, about this stuff, the, the 3D, uh, the, the biomechanical analysis stuff that we do, and then all the what we call PST, progressive skills training, and functional uh, movement pattern skilling that, uh, training that we do that, uh, that is really based on your, on your individual skill deficits, can be, but can be generalized and still uh, uh, get benefit or give benefit to the uh, people performing the exercises.